My name's Dave Stein. I build custom furniture from timber that I harvest from land that's been in my family for five generations. This is the hard way. I harvest almost all the timber that I use in my work right here off of our place. Here we got walnut, very large oak, 48 inches by 15 foot. Big sycamores here, more large walnut, white oak and red oak. I just keep this one here for inspiration. Walnut, 51 inches wide. Beer fridge, key. I was an attorney, I went to law school. But uh, I never really took to office life. If somebody's a fucker, I'll just say, hey, you're a fucker, you know? That's not good office politics, I found, but I don't care. Then we'll right. zing it through the kiln, and okay. four years from now, it could be a table. Right. <laughs> I always wanted to know how they used to do stuff, how they did it in the old times, and talk to my grandmother and my grandfather, and you know, what does this tool do, and what does that tool do? See how the handle's been on that thing, so that when you're hacking stuff, you can miss yourself. That's pretty cool. The hard way is the way of life. It's the way my friends and family live. Help yourself. You try to help each other out. We like to do things the right way, even if it's a little harder. Should be good for 100 years or so. You leave something for the next guy. You know what the right thing is. What it is is just not being an asshole. And those are the kind of guys I try to run around with. Hopefully I can get my jumping chicken over there. Come here. Weave has been in our family for as long as I can remember. I collect tractors, chainsaws, draw knives, spoke shaves, broad hatchets, broad axes, cast iron, cookware. The chickens know when I walk out that door about half the time I'm going to have some food in my hand, so they all run up and encircle me and stand and look. <laughs> there you go. I feel like Jesus giving the Sermon on the Mount, and the chickens are all my disciples but I don't think they're interested in what I have to say. Yeah, I think these are the better choice. He's always good for a story, moral support. As long as I wasn't too far from home, I guarantee if I needed something, I'd call Weave and he'd jump on it. He's a great guy. I get such enjoyment doing it the traditional way. Part of our society that thinks everything has to be done immediately. Man, that's a good look for you. Look like pig on a stick, yeah. huh? Dave and I met a couple of years ago over a passion for pork and a beautiful furniture, and we've been friends ever since. He's been doing it the hard way for years in his butcher shop. This was a beer drinking trophy. <laughs> it hadn't not been for this trophy, I wouldn't have remembered that we won it. He's an interesting character, not just his facial hair. I saw you put your finger down there. What was he measuring? I was measuring one finger away from the loin. Everything we do is the old-fashioned way. You know, your filet lays right here. Be your T-bones, porterhouse, your sirloin. This would be your ribeye. We can control our quality of our product because we don't mass produce anything. You got to cut the cord this way. That sounds like a Larry and Dave breakfast right there. <laughs> So here on the farm, we get together, we get the family and friends over, drink a few stags, have a great dinner. Everybody just kind of hangs out here at the farm. We just try to get together and help each other out. If your buddy needs a hand, are you too busy going to the ball game, or can you give him a hand? That's basically what we're trying to get at out here. So we, we need to find three or four boards to make that rack out of. Somebody asked me one time, you know, what do you do for a hobby? And I said, I don't really have any hobbies because I do whatever I want every fucking day. We could run a row of holes following the grain, though, not even line them up straight. Right. As you can see, I don't have an extravagant lifestyle, so I'm just sitting back and smelling the roses right now. We and I are going to make a whiskey rack for these guys that we know down at Pickney Bend do a little trade. They do some old school distilling. We and I need some whiskey to keep us warm every now and again. I got to figure out. If there's kind of a common neck size, we want to keep the cap wet on the whiskey. Weave provides not only support in the business that I do, inch and a half, but uh, marriage counseling, 
cocktail procurement and distribution. If we're making this for ourselves, it'd be empty most of the time. Weave drinks a stag in three drinks. <laughs> Gone. I don't keep a whole lot in stock. I usually just maybe get a case over a day or two. One time, I owed Weave 100 bucks, and so I was just going to get him 10 cases of stag. And he said, no, 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 no. Don't bring 10 cases of stag. If I have 10 cases of stag, I will drink them till they were gone, and then I will die. Sometimes I feel like drinking, sometimes I don't. But when I feel like drinking, I want to drink. Let's go ahead and get them jointed. That thing's going to have to hang. Right. You got her. Fuck you. Yeah, it looks like you've got this under control. I'm gonna head out. I'm old. Thanks for your help. See you later. I'll call you from the hospital. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thing. Gorgeous. Perfect. That'll look great. Dave wandered in here several months back. We found we had a lot in common. You know, he's got a family farm. I got a family farm. He's got a family farm. And we started talking wood and started talking whiskey. And we started talking trade. Start right with the good stuff. That's 124 proof. So ah. cool. That's the stuff right there. The newer technology would allow us to make a lot more whiskey right now. But we don't do it that way. This tastes better. You can't let this man drink alone. You can't let this man drink alone. <laughs> well, that never stopped me before. How are you guys not fucking wasted all the time? It's called discipline. Ah. The distinction between work and play is blurred. We have fun at what we do. How about we trade you a case, and I'll pull out two of the clear spirits, replace them with the Arminius. This is very special stuff. I love it. I love it. I swapped out the whiskey rack that I made for some whiskey, which is, in my opinion, way more valuable than a rack. Part of the flavor profile here, our unique thing is we have a seismic event that happens every 30 minutes it's called the Union Pacific Railroad. You can open the top of this barrel and you can see these low frequency vibrations. Sure. What that does is enhance the interaction between wood and spirit. That is the magic. That is what gives whiskey the flavors that we associate with whiskey. Well, you've been here when we've been talking. <laughs> Train comes through. Yeah. And ground shake. Hey, Ralph, how you do? <laughs> How you doing, Dave? <laughs> that looks good to me, buddy. I can tell you that. Look at that. Yesterday, we killed a couple hogs. We're going to make some sausage, cut a couple roasts out, throw them on the grill for later tonight so we can drink a few stags. Some leaf floored. My grandmother will love this for making soap. We'll take a big piece and turn him into a couple little pieces real quick. Be back fat. If I get a few seconds away from the shop, I'll run out here and we'll throw some sausage together and cut up some hogs and drink some beer and tell some lies and just have a hell of a good time. I'm a little embarrassed to be show my hack and cut against Larry. <laughs> We're usually about three quarters loaded and <laughs> just cutting up stuff. We're gonna pull the ribs out of here now. You know, you square up your bacon. Yeah, that looks cut good. Cut that right, right off at the joint. And you got a St. Louis style rib. Take this neck bone. That's good sauerkraut material there, too. Oh, yeah. Take these trimmings after a while and make some sausage out of them. There you go. That's the best part right there. Sure be nice. Guy had something to drink around his damn place. <laughs> Sit here all day. Oh, God, yeah, great, wonderful. There's a lot of love in this room. A lot of love. There's guys you run into that you really have a almost like a brotherly bond with immediately. You, you can tell they work for a living and they know what they're talking about and they're interested in what they do. They don't just do it for the paycheck. That's a good up. motion for you, Chris. You seem to have incredibly strong wrists. Somebody left a nice piece of lean on that fat. What the hell's the matter with you guys? <laughs> I bet you're not used to working with anything that big, are you? <laughs> These guys think they're butchers, and I just had to show them a few little pointers. Now wait, you got the salt in? That too thick. That's too for worse. melting ice, ain't it? Cocktail. I gotta get a beer, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> See you later, Louie. Maybe we ought to cut it into a roast right now, and we'll put that on the grill tonight to eat. I'm going to go fire up the grill. And let us know when you're done eating. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring you a little piece. Damn, that ain't bad for guessing. <laughs> Sky's the limit. If somebody comes up and I need a hog and they need some woodworking, I'll be more than happy to help them out. That's pretty damn good. Mm -hmm. That tasted damn good, to tell you the truth. Hey, here's that. 
picnic oh, thank roast you. for the uh, no, great. For the sauerkraut. Thank tonight. you. All right, guys, dig in, get a plate, dig in. There you, there you go. What we try to do is just do simple, honest things. And every meal we eat, every drink we take, we know where it came from and where it's going. I'm going to go on and put these neck bones. Everybody in this area lives like that. <laughs> this pork, so good. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Cheers. 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 Dave Stein epitomizes the hard way. I mean, you just don't meet men like Dave Stein. I remember on our first day, and I went to his apartment, and I opened his refrigerator, and there was sauerkraut that he and his mother had canned, and meat from a pig he had butchered himself, and his curtains he had literally sewn himself, his bedspread he made himself. He was sleeping in a bed that he made himself, and I just remember thinking, this is the guy for me. <laughs> they said, oh, you must be so proud that your son's an attorney. And I tell people, no, that's not the important part, that he's good to his mother and he's caring and good to his family. Doing stuff the hard way is like doing it the real way, doing it the American way. In a way that embraces the passion inherent in the process. And that's really where the joy comes from. I read a lot about Thoreau, and he was more into enjoying walking in the woods as opposed to people that go out and slaughter the woods and then make a housing development. You're not just producing some stupid fucking commodity that any goofball can produce. Those people in our society are, are seen as being the productive members, whereas a person like Thoreau is seen as being shiftless. You're taking your spirit and you're pushing it through that tool right into the wood and you're getting feedback the same way. You're trying to make something of lasting value and uh, I don't know, I, I get kind of choked up when I think about it. I just really care about it when I make it. Uh-oh. William's not quite as sociable as the baddies are. They don't like to be padded. There you go.